The only thing better than one banjo is, of course, two banjos. So let's see what a three-finger banjo and a claw hammer banjo sound like together. I've got my banjo tuned to an F chord right now, and Stuart's got his claw hammer banjo tuned to a C chord. So uh, we'll see if we can find a, a meeting place between the two banjos on a little bit of Arkansas Traveler. using a space pair of 121s. They're about 12 inches off the banjo and about 12 inches apart. I like to start there capturing the tail piece and the neck piece and avoiding the pick noise. It helps avoid the pick noise a little bit if you're not directly in front of it. I like the air this gives. It's a great starting place. There's a nice wide stereo spectrum. Another fun trick to try out with imaging is to actually flip the 121 backwards. On the back side, they typically run a little brighter. This helps the stereo image lean a little bit. And this is good for accompanying with other instruments. We'll see how this sounds. Hopefully you heard the difference on that. It was a little subtle, but within a mix, it can really make a difference. One thing to mention though, when flipping the mic, is it will be out of phase. So as a ribbon works, the backside is listening as well. It's a figure eight pattern, but it is 180 degrees out of phase. So you should be conscious of that. One thing also while working in a room is to use a homemade baffle. Sometimes this can really help. Uh, especially if these microphones are actually listening on the backside too, it can make a big difference on how these things hear the instrument in front of them. So I just wanted to show you an easy home baffling trick, mic stand, blanket, just drape it over, and you have a baffle. Then you can really start controlling the room noise.